Okay, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Around the Game with Deep End Sports Media. In the studio tonight, I am with one of the greatest in the game, Sudi Ulanga. When you see Mr. Sudi, you just know it's going to rain threes. This man is the best three-point shooter, I think, in Ugandan history. Of course, he doesn't hold the record. I think Albert Achiku, former Rhino player, holds the record of about 11 three-pointers in a game. But this man, Mr. Sudi Ulanga, one of the baddest in Ugandan basketball studio, very welcome. It's an honor to have you on this show tonight. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here with you. Uh, we're, we're actually more excited than you are. <laughs> Having a superstar like you in the studio uh, here is always an honor. <laughs> so how many years have you been in Uganda? Um, I think I've been in Uganda for 10 years. Uh, the first time I came to Uganda it was 2010, I think early 2010, when I came to play for Falcons. Yeah, so since then I've been I've been around and now uh, it's like my second home. I okay. have family, yes, I'm married to Uganda, I have children. Okay, that's so, nice. Yeah. So give me a brief history about you, you your basket, where you started from, like how you moved from, because uh, you're from Tanzania, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, so you moved from Tanzania to, to the States, then you came to Uganda. I want to understand that logic. Was it the States? Actually, Dodo, please tell us. Um... um uh, from from Tanzania, I think I, I went to Makoko High School in Tanzania. Okay. Um, I was I was on a basketball scholarship in Makongo High School, uh, but I think we we played some high school games. I think they were East, Eastern Central Africa. It was in 2005, 2006. Uh, we played uh, we played that tournament, and I, I, I remember we got into the finals. We played the finals against the Hazel Academy. And uh, after after playing that final, I also got a scholarship to, to go to Kenya. So I ended up in Kenya. So I went to Kenya and 2000 and, uh, in 2005 and 2006, I think. And yeah, so I was in Kenya for all that time until 2010, until 2010 when I finished high school. I came to Uganda. The first time I came to Uganda, I was playing for Falcons Basketball Club. I played for Falcons for one year. Then in 2011, I, I moved to UCU. I went to school. Then uh, in 2014, I moved away from UCU. After school, I went to I joined Power Basketball Club. I played for Power Basketball Club in 2015. Then after that, I also moved again. I went to KIU Titans uh, from 2015, no, from 2016. Up to last season, now moved on again. I went back to Houston. Okay, that's a really excellent. That means you've had a very marvelous career traveling from team to teams. Of course, when you move from big teams to big teams, it means you're really important to teams. So, I, I think it's safe for me to say, of course, with these struggling economies of ours in Africa, most especially East Africa, your parents never spent a penny on your education. I, I really, I really don't remember my parents spending money on my education. I, I think that was in uh, primary, uh, actually, back in TZ, and uh, then it wasn't even that much. Okay. But after primary, everything was, was just been for <laughs> for free. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. But why the love for Uganda? Because I, I remember you had I, before the start of the conversation, you told me you got married to a Ugandan woman. Why the love for Uganda? Why didn't you move to maybe Zambia, South Africa? Because I believe you have the potential to play in any of those countries. Um, uh, actually, I decided to, to come to Uganda. My first time to come to Uganda, it was, I think it was 2008 or 2009. We came to play uh, Eastern Central uh, tournament, yeah. high school tournament. I, I think I came to some place called uh, Fort Porto, I think. Yeah, Fort Porto. <laughs> yes, I, it, was, it, was, it was very nice. I, I enjoyed the tournament. Then after that, we, we got back to Kampala. We spent... We spent a day or two in Kampala before we went back to school, and I liked it a lot. Uh, but uh, before I finished uh, school in Kenya, I had I had a couple of options. But um, when you look at the leagues in Eastern Central Africa, uh, Uganda League is Uganda Basketball League is it's, it's, it's the most competitive league in in the region. Okay. It's the reason why I decided to come and uh, stay in Uganda. And of course, the first time I came to Uganda. Man, the, the, the fans were, were crazy, the place was so nice, and that's the reason why I decided to stay around. Okay, so the woman. <laughs> <laughs> that's just a joke anyway. Then, uh, She's also part of that. <laughs> she, is not, she is the main reason. It's, it's okay to agree. <laughs> anyway, 
right now we are living in a very dangerous era like where the era of the COVID-19 that is the coronavirus it has really affected us of course the sportsmen outside there uh, re regulations from the government cannot get into crowds and sports brings in a lot of crowds and there's no sport how is it affecting you uh, it has uh, what i can say it has really been crazy for the past uh, uh, two three months yeah three really months been, yeah it has, been, it has really been crazy <clears throat> uh remember we were i was set i was really set for the the week that was supposed to start on 19th i think of march i was really set but uh, then uh, <clears throat> when uh, when uh, when the president uh, uh, talked about the lockdown I was I was very disappointed. I was very disappointed because I put in a lot of work. I was ready for the league, but uh, uh, there's nothing to can do. There's nothing I can, I can do really. Um, right now, I'm just doing my individual training, trying to keep fit. But uh, trust me, uh, living without playing basketball to me has really been hard. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. Then uh, what can I what can I call it? In the states, like in the leagues outside there, uh, mm -hmm. the government has come up with measures to permit uh, sportsmen from going into stadiums, playing closed doors. When I say closed doors, I mean uh, no crowds like fans. They have mm -hmm. just permitted them to play. Don't you think it would be uh, a good idea in Uganda for the government to let sports continue, but under close supervision? Uh, it's it's going to be it's going to be very tough because uh, <clears throat> when we look at the, those leagues out there. Uh, before they resumed, uh, all the players, the staff, the, the, the workers, the employees, they had to, to, to get tested. Okay, so they, they, they have the resources for, you know, they had the resources for everyone to get tested. And you know, those test kits are not cheap, they're yeah. very expensive. And I don't think uh, the Ugandan government is willing to spend all that money. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I heard that uh, each uh, test kit cost about $65. <laughs> now imagine, yes. So. That's like uh, 250k or something yes. like that. Yeah. And um, for them, I think for them, they also fought very hard for league to resume, for their leagues to resume because they make a lot of money, you know, from from playing. Like at the moment, they may be, they may not be making uh, any money from maybe uh, uh, from the gates, from the entrances and stuff like that. But they also, right now they make a lot of money from the TV rights. Okay. That's the reason why they really push it for 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 the their leagues to resume. And of course, you know their <coughs> their league their leagues affect a lot their economies, unlike our yeah, our true. leagues, yeah. uh, especially in uh, in out in Africa. Yeah. Yes, that's the reason why I think uh, Mr. President is finding it so difficult to to have to have sports back, especially in Uganda. Okay, that's a very spot on answer. Thank you so much. Then uh, I heard you talk about you keeping fit. I see the muscles are out and uh, people outside there are really affected because uh, the government actually stopped gyms from operating. There was a time people were jogging and they were like, no more jogging by public gatherings because it was bringing a lot of people around. How are you keeping fit? The muscles are still... Huh? <laughs> there, there, are, there, there are so many things that you can do as, as, as an individual. Even in the house, uh, remember <laughs> President Museven has sent a clip of him walking out in the state house. Yes, uh, but uh, <clears throat> but uh, where I stay, I, I live I live uh, very close to Chambogu University, so it's easy for me to access the campus, and uh, uh, it's easy for me to access the campus, and uh, I get a lot of time running just inside the Chambogu University inside. I do a lot of running, and when I get back home, I do a lot of sit-ups, push-ups, and that yeah. is yeah, That's that is what I've been doing. Yes. Then, uh, briefly about your play in Uganda, what has been your most memorable moment in Ugandan basketball? That game you played, and you're like, this is it. <laughs> there, 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 there are a couple, but uh, I remember in uh, in 2015, 2015. Uh, we were playing game three. Then I was playing for for power. We were playing game three against the Falcons, and uh, the game was very tight. We went to we went for double overtime, and uh, we <laughs> we won that game. It was very hard. Okay. I, I think I, I I remember if I remember <laughs> very well, I scored forty one points, oh but it was not. In, it was in, not. You scored forty one in the Ugandan league. Yes, I. I, I I remember vividly. 
actually. I think you're the one who was marking me most <laughs> of the time, and <laughs> I really enjoyed that day. But I, the next day, it was very hard for me even to walk because <laughs> man, the game was very physical. Everything was very hard, and okay. I will never forget that game. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> 41 points in the United League. Yes, that is crazy. Yes, yes. It means you must have put up, a, I think, like lots of three. Yes, I think I had. Uh, I think I had. Uh, I actually had only eight eight, eight threes. You just say yeah. only. Yes, there were only eight <laughs> threes, but the rest were just layups. For me. Oh my God! So, <laughs> who has been that coach who has like pushed you when you're in Uganda? Like, I know you've been to uh, like four, five teams, four teams. Yes. Who is that coach that really like changed your game and put you right in Uganda? Yeah, I think. Uh, it's it's not very hard uh, to talk about him. That is uh, Coach uh, Nicholas Natuereza, the current uh, UCU Canons and Lady Canons coach. He has he has he has really been an imp- inspiration to me uh, since I joined UCU, and uh, he's the reason why I actually decided to go back to UCU Canons. Yeah, he's a very good friend of mine, and uh, he always he always he always push me, you know, to keep. You know, to keep working hard and uh, stay disciplined, you know, and uh, is the reason of is the reason why um, um, I, I could say I'm successful in basketball. So that's Coach Nick Natuheres, right? Yes. So is it safe for me to say Coach Nick is a Hall of Fame already in Ugandan basketball for what he has done in the league so far? Yeah, uh, but I think I call, I, 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 in my opinion, I call him the best coach in the country. Okay. Uh, yes, but because he has he has really done so many things for for very many basketballers in Uganda um, on and off the court. Okay. Yeah, so he should be one of those top coaches in the country. Let me let me take you a little bit away from yourself. Uh, of course, it concerns you, but locally, who do you look up to? Like that sportsman, like basketball player locally, maybe in Tanzania. Uganda, who mm-hmm. like inspires you in like in your life, basketball life? Yeah, actually, there are there there are two there are two players uh, in Tanzania is uh, Abdallah Ramadan Dula, and uh, in Uganda is Stephen Omoni. Um, <clears throat> I remember in uh, some time back, Stephen Omoni came to to Tize to play for for a club called uh, Vijana City Bulls. Then I was playing for their junior team. And uh, having him in the country, him uh, with Dula playing in the same team, it was crazy. It was so crazy. Oh, my God. And, uh, <laughs> oh my yes. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yeah. So um, since then, since then, I was like, man, I want to be, I really want to be like this guy. And uh, when I came to Uganda, of course, I got to know him. Uh, and uh, I never, I never, I never played with him in the same team. But I remember in 2012. Uh, we went to Nairobi to play a three-on-three tournament. That was that the first we won. time. Yes, that was the first time uh, I, I played with him in the same team, and it was very easy to play with him. <laughs> actually, we, I really had fun. I had fun. We, we we played very well in that tournament, and we won it. Yes, so I really look up to those two guys. And uh, apart from them, very uh, being very good basketballers on court, off court as well, they are very. They're very disciplined people. They take care of, of themselves, and uh, I like the, I like that a lot from them. So, do you, are you also a disciplined man off the court? Because, <laughs> of course, it is rumored basketball players are like this, they are like that. Are you disciplined? What do you think about I, yourself? I, I, I've really been trying my best to be disciplined. <laughs> that is what I can say. Yeah, I've, I've really been trying my best. To of be course, uh, with no parental supervision, like your relatives around, you can go haywire. So yeah, but uh, when you look. When, when when you look at my background, I I, I, I never really spent a lot of time with my parents. Okay. Like the moment I left Macomb, I went to Kenya. You know, I stayed in Kenya for some good years. My parents were not there, so it has always been about myself, taking care of myself, and uh, make sure that uh, I'm a disciplined player. You so know. So it's safe to say you're a perfect gentleman, right? I'm not really. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we talked about the you know, inspiration locally. Let's yes. go a little bit outside there. Like, of course, the NBA. There, 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 there are so many players that I like in the NBA. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, I grew up uh, watching uh, Kobe Bryant play, so I, I, I like him as I like him a lot as a player. And of course, 
you can't talk about NBA without talking about Michael Jordan and stuff like that. But uh, uh, by the time I was introduced in the, uh, in the game of basketball, Michael Jordan had already retired. But when I was playing, Kobe Bryant was still playing. So that is the guy I, is, uh, I was looking up to. And it's so sad that he's, 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 he's no longer with us. So a uh, quick, uh, quick one, Kobe LeBron. Who's better? <laughs> that debate is always. <laughs> yeah, they they they're both they're both great players, but I would go I would go with Kobe. You go with Kobe. Yes. Then Kobe LeBron Jordan. Um, a t- a tough one, but I would <laughs> go with Michael Jordan. The goat, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so now, uh, of course, the NBA is no longer like, taking place, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes uh, any yes. rumors about it, like resuming anytime soon? Uh, actually, there was uh, <coughs> uh, they were supposed to resume uh, on thirty first of next month in July, right? Yes, they were supposed to resume, but uh, I'm not very sure if it is going to resume because some players think that they should not resume. So we are still, we are, we actually still, we are still waiting. There are twenty two teams that are supposed to be playing in. Uh, tournament like okay uh yeah in uh, in um, in orlando um i'm yet to i'm yet to find out about about it so before we get done with this uh, marvelous interview what's your favorite food in uganda <laughs> um I, I i remember the first time i came to uganda that was in 2010 yeah, of course, I was staying with my teammates who were staying this side of Mtinda, and uh, we used to train from uh, we used to train from uh, Makere full court. But uh, every time after training, we'd either go for Rolex or a, <laughs> what do they call it, a TV chicken? Yeah, TV yes, chicken. Yeah, so, Ochikomando. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, for being a superstar is a challenge, like uh, locally and internationally. Sometimes people perceive superstars to be very unapproachable. They're like, ah, that guy swells, he feels, I cannot talk to him, what? If a person really wants to come to you for assistance, basketball-wise, or generally in life, describe yourself, are you approachable? It's, it's, it's very easy. It's very easy to approach me. I've talked to so many people who actually wanted what it might help. I've helped so many people because even me being here, I was helped by someone. Yeah. Okay. So it's easy for me to be approached really. And uh, I always welcome questions from different people. I, I like going to schools, talking to kids, you know. Yeah. And try to inspire. Okay. So start of the show, I talked about your favorite people. That's the three-point shot. Hmm. Is it safe for me to say that's your best strength, like on the basketball court? Yeah, uh, I think it is because uh, that is always that has always been my first option. Every time I get the ball, I'm looking at shooting. 
shooting it. Yeah. If I don't have the shot, that is when I'll start thinking about something else. Yeah. Yeah. So I I could also call it my what my favorite. My favorite. <laughs> But isn't a three-point shot spoiling the, the game these days? Because kids outside there, I know Steph Curry must be one of your favorite players these days. Kids outside there, whenever they get the ball, they want to pull up from anywhere, just like Steph Curry. Don't you think it's a big effect of the game these days? Negatively. Um, yes, it is. Uh, it is. When you look at someone like uh, Steph Curry, um, that man puts a lot of work, you know? He shoots a lot of threes, you know. Uh, he, he practices a lot, but uh, uh, most of, of the players nowadays they fall in love with the three-point shot without putting in work, and uh, that becomes a problem. If if you're really putting in work, you can go, you can go, you can you can take as many attempts as you can because a three-point shot is a very low percentage shot, yeah. unlike a layup or a mid-range jumper or anything else. So. Uh, three, for, for a three-point shot to be your first option, you really have to be good at it. You really have to put in a lot of work yeah. for it to be your first option. Yeah, but uh, when I look at the game right now, like in the NBA, every for you to be, to actually to stay in the NBA, you need to be able to shoot from the outside. Okay, yeah. who has been your toughest opponent in the Ugandan league? Oh, internationally, I'll not, say, I'll not talk about Uganda. The Ugandan league... Yeah, it's tough, but um, I would say this again. Um, I played, I played uh, with Cyrus Chiviri a, a couple, a couple of times, and he's a very aggressive defender. I also played with him in the same in the same squad. I think it, that was uh, I don't remember which year it was, but uh, we were in the same team. In we were we played we both played for UCU Cannons. So even then, when we were practicing, we used to mark each other. Even games when we'd play, like I remember Warriors, there was a time we were playing Warriors, he was marking me, so I would call it my toughest opponent, really. It's actually the current MVP, right? Yes. So, for fans who want to like meet you, of course, the coronavirus has messed up everything. Apart from training, if someone wants to play with you uh, in Uganda, where would they like find you if they want to like play basketball with you or against you one-on-one -on -one or something like that? No, at the moment almost impossible. No, so right it's, now it's, it's impossible. Yes, it's impossible. When it's, done. when it's when it's done. When there's no more corona. Um yeah, but um I think when the league uh, returns more, uh, I'll be spending most of my time in the corner because I'm going to 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 play for UCU Canon so I'll be spending most of it in my time that side. But apart from that side, uh, somewhere else where you uh, where I, I work out from is I work out from Kabira and YMC at the same time. Okay, then uh, your parent your parents' influence on your life, because in terms of basketball, then as a man, yeah. your parents' influence on your life. Yeah, uh, like uh, like my mom. <laughs> my mom, my mom has really been there for me. Uh, I remember when I was still in TZ. Uh, before I went to, before I joined uh, Laser Academy in Kenya, my mom used to wake me up almost every day in the morning to go and and work out. Yeah, because uh, when when she had about uh, scholarships being around, she was like, actually, <laughs> I can use, actually, I can save some money. <laughs> yeah, so she used to push me every every. Almost every day, I would she would wake me up every every time in the morning to go and put in work. She would support me, buy me shoes, you know, stuff, basketball things like uh, uh, <coughs> like shoes, like basketballs. Then they were they used to be very expensive, and uh, me being a student then, it was not it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't easy for me to afford them. So she has really been there for me, and uh, <coughs> she has actually been around. She wanted to watch some of basketball games, but. Uh, <coughs> But now they, they we are in lockdown. There are no games, yeah. so yeah, she, I don't think she will be able to watch any of the games. Around. Okay, I'm going to talk about soccer a little bit. Soccer is a very popular sport. Like when I talk about popular, I mean in Brazil, in the city, people play soccer, and uh, it has been taught easily to people because it's very accessible. It's cheap. You go anywhere, you find people playing soccer on the streets everywhere. In in like compared to basketball, if if people were to improve basketball-wise, 
what would you advise like people outside there with authority to do um for the kids actually yeah um it's it's um i think everyone almost everyone has played soccer before yeah. because uh you can play soccer i want to believe that you can play soccer from anywhere yeah true okay? like in brazil you can yes, yes you can just step out of your house and start playing soccer yeah. but to play uh to play basketball you need to have at least a basketball hoop somewhere yeah. yes they maybe they 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 what the the court will come after but the the most important thing is the basketball hoop so and um I don't think we have enough basketball you know uh I don't think we have enough basketball courts in in most of the countries in Africa uh like here in Uganda in TZ in Kenya so uh for this game to grow for the basketball game to grow in this country especially in East and Central Africa more basketball courts have to be built okay yes for it to become more common yeah, like yeah. Uh, yes like more popular like soccer then uh lastly but not least apart from soccer what do you find yourself good at sports wise sports wise apart from basketball yes, you mean right I mean, sir, apart from yes sports um, <laughs> I, I i i played soccer i played soccer i played soccer a lot actually when i was young even when i was uh, in lesail i played soccer for the for the school team i also played rugby but uh, <laughs> but i was stopped from uh playing rugby because there was a time I got a very bad shoulder injury. Was that big chest? You <laughs> someone hurt you? Is that possible? I got yes, I got I was on a basketball scholarship but I was playing soccer, rugby and basketball at the okay. same time. So I got hurt playing rugby and my coach didn't like it and that was the last time I played rugby and soccer, soccer. at the same time. I had to concentrate and stay uh on basketball. On basketball. Then uh, the the last thing any word to your fans outside there people who want to be like you how do you inspire them something for the fans um it's 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 tough it's tough it's always very tough especially to stay up there it's very tough because uh i think as a sportsman it's very easy for you to wake up once in a while to go and put in work but uh, if you want to be great you have to be waking up every day to go and put in work and you can't play a game or two games and you start thinking that you're the best okay you need to play for some good time like when we are talking about some someone like Steven Omonye or or Dula these are the guys who have played basketball for a very long time and they've been great for a very long time and uh, uh, I'm very sure it has not been very easy for them to stay to stay up there so um I would want to tell the you know the the the, the upcoming talents it's not easy they need to keep putting in work they need to be very disciplined you need to they need to take care of themselves for them to you know to to get to that level and of course maintain and become one of the greats okay ladies and gentlemen that has been mr sudi ulanga uganda's finest when it comes to three and of course a basketball uh, basketball player i know you're going to be a hall of fame in future amen ulanga <laughs> uh, that is sudi ulanga ladies and gentlemen thank you so much i hope i can host you next time Okay we're going into a very short break and we shall be back with other sports. Thank you so much. Okay, welcome back ladies and gentlemen. Of course it's Deep End Sports Media. This man Mr. Sudi Ulanga actually is a fan of soccer. So, 
I decided to kick him on the show so that we like talk about soccer briefly. And I hope that is okay with you. Uh, I'll try my best. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the Premier League, the, of course, the top leagues outside there have resumed. That is La Liga, Serie A, Bundesliga, Premier League. I've resumed. Before we go any further, what has been your catchy moment during the corona time? I think uh, that was uh, when PSG was crowned the, the, what? the champions of, of, of France. Okay. Yes, the league was still, you know, the league was still competitive. Uh, many teams were still uh, fighting for the, you know, for the title. But uh, because of the pandemic, you know, the government, I think, had to call it off. And okay. uh, PSG was... So that means we, we share something in common. Me, it's Ajax becoming the champions of uh, the Dutch league. So, okay. <laughs> anyway, the pre- uh, Premier League is back. Are people excited? Uh, the, the husbands finally got the remotes back. <laughs> it's been crazy, but the husbands finally got the remotes back. Uh, Bundesliga back, Italian, Italian league back. And uh, what else? I think that's uh, pretty. It's uh, La Liga. Yes, La Liga, Serie A, Bundesliga, Premier League. Yeah. So, of course, uh, I'm going to touch uh, the Premier League first. That is the most, uh, I think, watched league worldwide. Mm. Liverpool are going to be champions. Uh, how do you feel? <laughs> it's, 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 just, yeah, it's just a matter of time uh, before they are crowned the champions. But I feel like they deserve it. You know, They deserve it. They have really been good uh, the past two, three years. Uh, like uh, last season, they played very well. But it wasn't enough because Man City was up there. You know, it wasn't enough for them to win, though they won uh, they won uh, Champions League. So they they've really been good, and now they have really. <laughs> man, when you look at the gap uh, between number one and number it's two, they really points. yes, they have really been outstanding. And I feel like points. Liverpool has about eighty three. Yes, uh, Man City has sixty three. Yes, uh, so they have really been outstanding all through the season. And it's it's very painful the fact that I'm a Man U fan uh, seeing Liverpool being crowned the the champions, but I think they deserve it. Yes. <laughs> I want to first talk about uh, Liverpool before I talk about Manchester. Why do you think Liverpool has changed the league? I'm going to say they have changed the league because they're not uh, they're not it's not a money money bag team. It's not like uh, Man City, Chelsea, Real Madrid, Manchester United. They don't go in the markets and buy those expensive players. Why do you think there has been a change tremendously in Liverpool's title chest this season? I, 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 think, I think the best thing they, they, they did was to, to keep their manager for, for some good time because uh, you know they trained in Premier League. Yeah. When you don't do well, like if you, if you don't play well for like maybe 8-10 games, you can easily get sucked. Yeah. But uh, Liverpool has been with, uh, with, with Klopp for some good time. They gave him some time to, to build up the team. And I and I think he is a very good manager. He built the team very well, and that's the reason why they are the best right now. Because they took their time, they built the, they they built the team very well, and you can see it's now paying off. Do you think they're going to still be contenders next season? Because uh, truth be told, uh, sports is a business these days, and uh, Liverpool has some catchy players. They have Sadio Mane, rumor to be going to Real Madrid. Mohamed Salah, also Real Madrid, one team. Do you think they're going to be contenders and do you think these players are going to still stay uh, in Liverpool? Of course, it's everyone's dream to play for the Mirenge. Everyone. They always want to play for, for Real Madrid. So, Yeah. Um, I think they're still going to be a good team you know, uh, for the next two or three seasons. Uh, so, though, of course, the players are getting older. When you look at most of their players are in their late 20s, you know, uh, but they're still going to be the best in, in one of the best teams in, in, in Europe. And uh, uh, for you know, for 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 players, for for players to move from one team to another team, it's always because of you know uh, performing and winning titles. Okay. You know, Liverpool, they are on top of the world right now. Though they are they are they are they are being knocked out of Champions League. That's I'm very actually sure. what I wanted to tell yes, you. Yes, they are very sure they are not they are not happy. It. Start of Corona, but, they drew uh, against Lima, uh, Everton. Uh, before the end of Corona, they had lost to Atletico Madrid. Yes. So, don't you think uh, they have begun going down? Uh, not really. I, I don't think so. I they'll don't just think shake so. it off. And yeah, they'll just shake it off. And uh, 
and continue with their with their run. They didn't start very well, of course, uh, after drawing against uh, which team again? Everton. Uh, Everton. Yeah. But I believe they will come back, especially tonight, and, and win it. Yeah. So they, you, me, me, I'm actually not worried about the competition. My worry is about them losing the two best players from Africa. That is Sadio Mane and mm. Mohamed Salah. Do you think they have the ability I, I to keep have, those players? I have, I, I have the belief that they're going to keep those players. But me, I'm actually worried about the competition. Yeah. You know, the, the, the way Man City uh, was dis dominating, they dominated for like two seasons, I think. Yeah. Everyone was planning to beat Man City. Yeah. And people teams found ways of beating Man City. Yeah. That's the same way every team will be planning on how to beat Liverpool. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Premier League is very competitive. You know, uh, teams are going to spend money. They're going to spend money, you know, improving their teams. Like a team like, of course, a team like, uh, a team like Man U, a team like Man City. Yeah. They'll come strong and uh, you know and challenge Liverpool next season. Then uh, Man City, Man City kind of soccer this season. I should disappointed. I, I remember there was a game between Chelsea and Man City last season, and Chelsea had about three attempts at old goal and off target. They had only three the whole game. This season they have really dropped. Teams have come and beaten them. I remember Wolverhampton beat them. Yes. So oh, once you check on Man City, they actually have 63 points. They are down by 20 points, the current former champions. Yeah, they're, they're that's, that's sports, you know. And that's sports. Uh, people will always, if, you, if you're there, they'll always be planning for you. The way people, at other teams have been planning for, for Man City. And uh, I also think that they really struggled this season. I don't know the reason why they have they, they been struggling. But uh, me watching their first two games after this, after this uh, lockdown, Man, they are looking good. They are li they are really looking good. But it's too late, of course, to compete for the Premier League. Yeah. But they are really looking good, and I'm very sure. I'm very sure after this season, uh, Pepe is going to invest more money into yeah, buying, yeah, yeah. Yeah, buying uh, you know, uh, pieces that he needs in the team. It, it will become better again. That that takes me to my next question. When you talk about Pep, mm -hmm. Pep is the man who moves from team to team. When t when teams in that league discover his secret, he moves. Is he going to stay in England? It's not. <laughs> There's a rumor he may go back to Barcelona. Uh, I am not. Ve I'm not very sure about that. And um, 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 I think he still wants to prove a point. Special. Uh, he has won Premier League twice. I think right now he's actually trying to win. Uh, uh, he's try actually trying to win uh, what? What is this? The Champions League. Uh, the Champions League. <laughs> And I think it's going to be very hard for him to move on without, without winning, winning the Champions, Champions League. So he's going to try his best to win Champions League before okay. he moves on. Yeah. I'm going to go to the fight for the top four. Actually, let me not even talk about top four. Let me talk about the oh, last five. two positions. No, let me <laughs> say last two. Number three and number four. Of course, we still have teams battling for those positions. Uh, we have uh, Wolves. Wolves has 46 points. Yes. Manchester has 46. I think there's just a goal difference. Between those teams. There's also Sheffield United. Yes, there's also Sheffield really yeah. fighting yeah. so hard. Yeah. Then, uh, points, yeah. then Liverpool and uh, not Liverpool, Leicester City and Chelsea are still battling. Leicester has yes. about 55 and Chelsea has about uh, 51 with a game in hand. Mm -hmm. So it's still tight. Uh, 46, uh, 51, and 55. 55 yes. it's, it's very close. Uh, from um, from actually from number from number three going down up to up to up to number 12, 13. It's still close. Yeah. It's very close. Now, you see those two teams, uh, Leicester City and uh, Chelsea. Yeah. They can also be displ di displaced from up yeah, there. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Yeah. They are, they are, I think they are about eight or seven games to go. Yeah, actually. Yeah, it's very, seven games. Yeah, seven games to go. So uh, those teams have to play very well for them to stay up there. And uh, these other teams like uh, Manchester United, Tottenham, uh, uh, Wolves, uh, Sheffield United, all all those teams are fighting for position four, five, five and four. It's going to be very competitive. It's going to be very hard up to the last game. Yes. So I'm going to talk. Uh, I'm going to talk about Arsenal because I know there are lots of Arsenal fans outside there. They're disappointed, and uh, I'll, I'll talk about basketball a little bit. I'll talk about the great Michael uh, Michael Jordan. There's a season where his last season, like in the NBA, not in the NBA, in Chicago Bulls. There were rumors of him moving away and uh, the, the organization was trying to rebuild and Michael Jordan talked about rebuilding an organization doesn't take like five years, ten years, can even take forty to fifty years. Is it safe for me to say Arsenal has reached 
uh, that part of it, <laughs> of it, can I, can I say career, like rebuilding. I don't know. So if you look at the Premier League table, Arsenal has 40 points. Those days, yeah. it used to be Manchester, Arsenal, Manchester, Arsenal. Yeah. Arsenal has 40 points, Liverpool has 83 points. Start of uh, the Premier League during the COVID era, Arsenal has lost, is it about two games? Yes. They, they have lost, lost two games. They have lost, lost to Man City. 3-0. Lost to Brighton 2-1. 2-1. Yes. And I think they are playing today or tomorrow. I'm not very sure. Is it safe for me to say Arsenal is done, the fans should relax and wait about for more yeah, 20 the, years the, before? The problem with Arsenal fans is that they have they have a lot of expectations. <laughs> <laughs> they expect a lot from the team. Um, and, um, you know, they haven't been stable. Uh, Lately, they have not been stable. They remember they have just uh, fired their former manager, yeah. and now Atet has just taken over. It's, okay. it's going to be, it's going, to, it's going to be, it's going to take, it's going to take him some time to build the team. Yeah. Yes, and uh, for you know, for the team to be good, the way Liverpool, uh, the way Liverpool is right now, it will take some time. They have to have, they have to, you know, to 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 grow young talents at the same time they have to spend some money to bring in some good players okay. and that is not going to take a year or two years so uh, but i'm but just advising arsenal fans to be patient to be a little bit a little more patient and uh, <laughs> and wait for ateta you know to but when you talk about bringing in new players yes. the most cast arsenal fan i mean player currently is david lewis and about yesterday night david lewis signed another contract extended his contract by about one year and uh, of course, you know, outside there, the fans have a very big influence in team. Yes. I remember, do you remember when Arsene Wenger was still coaching Arsenal, there were banners all over the place. Wenger out, planes used to fly uh, in the air with banners of Wenger out, and Wenger left. Fans have been crying for for David Lewis to leave. They are like, we're tired of this guy. Of course, he came from Chelsea as a very good player, reaching Arsenal. I don't know what has happened. Fans are crying for him to leave, and you talked about Arsenal getting good players. It's just tough to say the Arsenal organization doesn't really care about what people say. They are all about profits. Because <laughs> I, anyway, I do not all, see Arsenal bringing new players. All, um, they, are, they are going to be forced to spend money. You know, They are going to be forced to spend money. But if, if Because if they don't spend money, they will get relegated. And I don't think that is what they want. Right I don't now. think that's possible. Yes. Um, and I also think that... Uh, David Lewis is a is overrated as a defender, really. I think it's overrated. Yes, right? yes, 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 like yes, he yes he's overrated. He has really been <laughs> struggling. <laughs> even that, even in that game where he was uh, red carded, he wasn't yeah. first choice. He came from the bench. From the bench yes, right? after the injury. Yeah. yeah. So it wasn't Ateta's first choice. So he came off the off the bench. The moment it came in, <laughs> everything happened. <laughs> so I don't think even <laughs> I don't think Ateta is. <laughs> Actually, I, I, I could actually say that he won the game for Man City. Because before he came on, okay. Arsenal was doing well. The, the organization was very well. They were defending very well. They were, you know, they, they, they were just defending and uh, trying to counter-attack Manchester City. So yes, it's safe for me to say Arsenal is a team in progress, right? Yeah, they're a team in progress. It will take some time. Arsenal fans should relax and uh, give Ateta some time to build the team. I want to, to briefly talk about the two... The, the two powerhouses in, in the English Premier League, that's uh, Manchester United and Chelsea, they have not really been doing well past two seasons. They have new young coaches, former players, that is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Frank Lampard. They're doing well. Teams are playing good soccer, but the results are just not coming their way. So what do you think about those two teams? Do you think with time they're going to get there and become the Liverpools and Man Cities of these days? It's, it's, it's the way you said it, it's the work in progress. Because Chelsea has yes. been in the market spending with Tim Warner. Uh, they got the yes, uh, but uh, um, which, uh, Sancho. yes, if if you haven't realized, they've been investing on young players. Okay. Yes, they've been investing on young players, and for them to be in Champions League right now, it's it's a plus, you know. But uh, I'm very sure uh, Lampard is given some good time to what to to rebuild, to, yeah, to rebuild the team. No same as same as Manu. Okay. Yes, same as Manu. When because when you look at those two squads. They have yeah, very exactly. young, yes. They have very young players in the team, and trust me, in in about two or three years, they'll go back to okay. So where they belong. Okay, looking at the relegated teams, uh, we have about uh, we have uh, Aston Villa, we have Norwich, uh, we have uh, West Ham, Watford, uh, Brighton. Those are the teams fighting relegation. Is it safe for me to say like uh, a team like Aston Villa is already done? 
a team like that which is done are they already already going because i know there's still one more spot uh, the 17th position actually 16 because they really get three mm -hmm. so there's still competition between uh brighton watford and uh and bones uh, not even bones uh, and west Ham for that last last spot yeah i, I think the, the the last two teams that is um that is uh norwich yeah and, norwich uh, and uh norwich and villa and Aston Aston villa. Villa, yes. yeah those two teams have really been struggling they've really been struggling now a team like uh, norwich they still have very tough games to play and uh, they have not been playing well at all so I don't think we are going to see any surprise. I would say those are the two teams that will be. That have already gone. I, I believe. Uh, I believe. No, it has already gone. Aston yeah. Villa has already gone. So the battle is for the last uh, 18th position, 17th, 16th position. Yes. Told you Watford, Brighton, Bournemouth are the ones fighting. Yes. So I think the two are confirmed. So we still have one spot up yes. for grabs. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's pretty much about it about the English Premier League. Uh, Liverpool are champions, it's going to be history made. They are not the champions. That, I think they're champions. 20 <laughs> points, yeah, there's no miracle. They need five more points. Is, is Jagen Klopp going to be crowned a star? Because I think that's, uh, that's <laughs> our one. Even the people who go to oh, England and do one. The goal they scored, I would like to call it a... It was just a fumble. It was a hallelujah Yes, goal. it was a... <laughs> Yeah, it was just a fumble, but uh, the team they played gave them a very hard time, and um, I don't think they, they, I don't think they have a big, you know, a big squad the way yeah. Real Madrid is. Yeah, you know? right. Real Madrid has a very big squad. They have so many options. When you look at, when you watch their games, each game Zidane has so many options. He sits up. Yeah, and some players, he doesn't yes, play. And you see, and that is a world, see world class player. Comes from, uh, he, he came from injury. He came. He scored the first game they played. Uh, there are so many options, my God. And uh, when I look at uh, when I look at uh, Barcelona, most most of Barcelona players right now kids. are actually old players. They are not kids; they are actually old players. Mm. Yes, when you look at Messi, Messi is above thirty. When you mm. look at uh, Vidal, is Bo above Busquets. thirty. Busquets uh, above Pique. thirty. Gerard Pique above thirty. Um, Vidal. Yeah, I've mentioned him already. Um, who, who else? Who else? Um, Alba, Jody Alba. Jody Alba is 31, 32 years old. Yeah. So um, it's an old squad. Yes, it's they an old squad. Yes, they need to revert. They have, they have very few young talents in the team. But I think they have the potential of buying in like, new talents. Yeah, they, they, they can't. Players they, don't they, want they, to go to Barcelona. That's another problem. Hey, who told you that? <laughs> you know, <laughs> when, you play, when you play on the star, you're going to be... You're going to be overshadowed. Right? Yes, you're People going to be overshadowed. That. Neymar left uh, Barcelona because, because of yeah, Messi. Messi. Of course, yeah. they have, there was, there's no love lost between Messi and, and uh, Neymar, but he wanted to he wanted his name to be sung outside there, like one of the greats like, from Brazil. But uh, guys are scared of coming to play with Messi, not because he's like b a bad person, but the competition, they're scared of the competition. That's very and true. players are not coming to Barcelona. If you look at the past three seasons, who yeah. have been uh, Barcelona's best signed? I'll say Arturo Vidal. Who has come to Barcelona? Uh, maybe uh, this guy who came from Atletico uh, uh, Madrid, what is his name? Griezmann. Griezmann, Griezmann is struggling. That's yes, a Roma really, yeah. by the end of the season. <laughs> so, like yesterday, he was subbed very early and was so annoying. frustrated. Yes, he was very frustrated. So I think, uh, I think they're really struggling. Uh, I think Barcelona is struggling. It's going to be really, really hard for them to it's, break through. Yes, it's going to be very hard. But it's still close. It's yes, very close. For yes. this goal, this season is still open. I'm yes. talking about the future. Because yeah. first of all, the great Messi has to go. He's about 30, 32, 33 years. He's 32 years. Yes, yes, he yes, still years, yes, some and years. In days, when you get to that age, people don't see sense in you. They okay, yes. not sense as in this guy can't play. But they feel like this guy is going. Cristiano Ronaldo left Real Madrid when he was out. Old. Cristiano is about 35 years old. Yes, exactly. So he left Real Madrid when he was about 34. Back then, 34, yes. you're still at your peak. You're still at your peak. At 33, you're still at your peak. But Real Madrid was like, I think it's about time we let this man go. Yeah, they so got, they got some good money out of him. Yeah, they got good yes. money. And Barcelona cannot risk of selling Lionel Messi. So is Barcelona going to keep struggling? If you look at last season they, in the Champions League, of course, season in, season out, Real Madrid, Barcelona, first priority for all coaches is the Champions League. If you look at how back-to-back -back Champions Leagues, if, you see now, if you've seen how they have been losing, it's crazy. The last one was against Roma. Of course, first leg, they were up. Second leg, second leg the, the great Greek, uh, something like that by Peter Drury just came and it was done for Messi. Last season, 
in first round that spectacular goal, a uh, free kick by Lionel Messi, game two done by Liverpool. Uh, so I think, uh, me personally, I think if Barcelona wants a chance, they should think of replacing Lionel. No disrespect, of course, the greatest. They should think of replacing if they want to go any further. Yeah, and uh, it's it's going to be very it's going to be a very hard decision for uh, for them to take, but they will eventually have to take it. Yeah, because the money is growing. You know, the money is growing all the years to move on. Okay, let's touch briefly on that. I know I, I'm very sure being a Manchester United fan, that's what you just said. I am pretty sure Juventus is your team. I know you're in love with Cristiano Ronaldo. All Manchester fans there will ever, if, will if ever you, Cristiano if, goes. You must be, you, if you're watching all those, if you're watching all the leagues, you must be having one team in each and every league. <laughs> yes. Okay, let's talk about the Italian <laughs> league briefly. It's still tight. Uh, the league is it's not yet actually done. Yeah, if you look at, uh, they have played about 27 games. Yeah, 27. Juventus has played 27, and last year the second team has played 26. The table is still tight. Real, uh, I mean Juventus has uh, 66, and uh, Lazio has 62. Yes, with the game in hand. With the game in hand, so yes. that league is still tight. Is Cristiano getting old? <laughs> of course, he's getting old. So is, it, <laughs> is it about time for him to say? <laughs> there was a rumor. I was talking to some friends sometime. He was telling me. The blogs are saying he still wants to play World Cup. Yeah, in the World Cup, he's going to be about 38 years old if he's struggling in an Italian league. Look, no disrespect to the Italian league, it's a, it's not that competitive. If you look at the if you look at the table stand, it's like I think Juventus has taken this league for the past five six seasons. Yes. It's not that it's competitive. Not, it is not it is not their priority. Yes, with a mm. with a player like Cristiano Ronaldo and Juventus, how are they struggling this season? They got uh, sorry, they got sorry. How are they struggling? They are actually, actually, I, I could say they are not really struggling. It's the other teams that are also doing well. A team like Lazio, a team like uh, Inter Milan. Yes. <laughs> they have really recruited very well. Yes. And they're doing well. Yes. Because the plan is to beat the champion. Yes. Everyone is trying to beat, um, everyone is trying to beat uh, which team again? Um, I the before, champions. I yes. a little bit. <laughs> Cristiano Ronaldo, Lionel Messi, a Hall of Famer. They, yes, they, they, they are under that good discussion. If you if you look at teams back in the day where the Zinedine Zidane, Dalima, Ronaldo, all those teams who had such players were always victorious. You cannot tell me Lazio. Uh, if you ask any normal fan outside there, how many players they know from Lazio, right. <laughs> they'll, 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 they'll they'll be like, what is this guy talking about? <laughs> Lazio is a team where the players are not even known. Juventus has world class players. Yeah. Diabala, they have uh, you name them, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Buffon is in the is on, on the bench. Can you imagine? Yeah. Um, so Juventus is a world class team. Di Maria, all in Juventus, but they're struggling. So I think it yeah, is safe. I think they're, they're, they're just they're just struggling as a team. Is it the salary football? But uh, now also change of manager. Remember they had to fire their 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 previous coach because. He was not winning the Champions League yeah. because their priority is not winning the nah, it's what the, the Syria they have won it enough yeah. so now they are actually trying to win what the Champions League so it's going to take some time you know before those guys uh, get used to Sari ball remember <laughs> what happened so it, it is tough for me to say just like they told Arsenal fans they should be no, patient it's not going to take that long <laughs> it's not going to take I'm that long because to players to yes I'm uh, talking about <laughs> Cristiano Ronaldo as a superstar. So it is safe for me to say bye bye Cristiano Ronaldo. Your I think he has a year or two still like uh, like Messi. Well, maybe I think yeah, Messi is way younger than Cristiano Ronaldo. I think he has about three. Years. three. And Ronaldo has about a month left. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> of course not this week. Ronaldo is still one of the best players in the world. He can still play one more season. <laughs> that is correct. Then uh, let's go a little bit on Champions League before we wrap this up. What's the plan for the Champions League? Um, uh, from, I, I had they want to play something like a tournament. Okay. Yeah, they they want to to have uh, all the teams in one venue, and they play that on knockout. Knockout. Yes. Uh, they're not going to play uh, home and away the way they used to play. Taking a lot uh, of time. Before yes. Then, yeah. So then now they just if, yeah. If you meet, if you're going to meet Man City. You play them once, they beat you, you're out. <laughs> okay, <I think>, uh, <laughs> yeah. The best thing on how much sports has uh, put in. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I think that, uh, that that will work. I think it of will work. Of course, we are not going to. We shall not. As fans, we are not going to. You know, we are not going to get. Enjoy. Yeah, we are not going to enjoy and get 
uh, what we've always been expecting from Champions League. But uh, uh, when you look at this situation that we are in, that's the best option, I think. Okay, that has been Studi Ulanga and Vini Jurua. We have been live we are in the studio tonight. Studi, I'm so excited to have you here. I hope once again to have you next time. I will, I will, I will, I will be very happy to be back here again. But I think Manu has to win a couple of games <laughs> for me. <laughs> okay, that's around the game. A video host, Vini Jurua and Studi Ulanga, one of the best guests so far. I think we shall see you on Sunday. Have a good evening. Thank you so much.